Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. Uh, I sat down for a few hours and modeled this camper van here. And uh, it's something that will show up in my animated film that I'm working on. It's part of some of the intro shots. And uh, you know, if you followed my channel, you know that I'm posting a lot about that recently, about the film. And um, yeah, I wanted to take you along on as many of the steps as possible. So I thought, how can I show you how this was made in a more, in like an informative way? Because uh, I did record the entire process of me modeling it, but it's pretty long and, you know, it's a lot about me trying to figure things out and failing. <laughs> so maybe it's better that you don't watch me dig myself into rabbit holes that I can't get out of, but rather you know, maybe I find another way of being informative about it. Um, and I did think maybe I could just speed up the process, you know, show you like a time lapse of, of, the, um, of the whole thing. But that's also quite hard to, to watch, you know, modeling in, in time lapse is always really flickery because the camera moves around and it's all this, you know, like it's, it's just kind of hard for the eye. So instead I thought we just take the final product where I've already solved all the problems and then I break it down from there and sort of backwards engineer it so that you get to see some of the uh, main components of how, you know, I can break down how those are done. So let's start, like, what do you, what do you, when you look at this, what, how would you start is the question. It looks quite complex, I guess, as an object, um, but it mainly what it is, it's, it's smaller objects that sort of creates complexity put together, but they're all very quite basic. But what I did start with is to create a sort of a form that defines the shape of the car. And I'll show you here. Let's just bring this over here. So this is kind of what the initial state was. And that doesn't look much of like a car though. It's more like a two-year-old's drawing of a car, um, big blob. But it sort of sets the shape. And um, if I turn this subdivision off here, you can see that it's very few polygons. Um, it's actually pretty messy even. But how I did this is just, I used a cube. Whoa, a cube, and then we can make it editable. So I'm allowed to move the vertices around and the polygons. And then I can just start extruding bits out of this, you know? So if we do this, for example, pull this guy down. Uh, you can find the extrude tool and all the tools if you right click. And then we just keep extruding. You know, this could sort of be the shape of a very, basic shape of the car. Let's make it a little longer. You know, something like this. And then if I select this tool so I can select the corners, we can use the loop cut tool here. Because um, normally what I want to do is I want to add it into a subdivider to add more vertices and smooth it out. But when we do that with only these few polygons, it becomes a sausage. So let's not do that yet. Let's take the cube uh, or our shape here and start giving it some more um, some more vertices. And I'm just gonna add a bit to each side here with this loop tool here, which is great. And what you'll see is that if I do that, now it's way more in, it sort of follows the shape of the car a bit more that way. And then you can just, you know, take certain parts of this and make sure it actually looks a bit more like a car than, than just a big box. So you can squash, oops, you can squash in the roof a little bit or yeah, whatever, like basically till you get to something like that. And um, if I turn the subdivider on, it looks, um, yeah, as I said, it doesn't look very, very good, but normally when you see a frame of a car, you have like holes for windows and so on. And how I made those is, by adding some geometry that sort of represents the negative space rather than trying to take this and like take out polygon we can use a bool object but i'll show you that in a second first i'm just going to show you how these objects work um so 
I'm just creating different shapes for different cuts. So you have for the wheels, for example, some kind of circular cut and for the door it's more angular. And I would go into like a side view here and using a pen tool, either a pen tool, if, it, if it's something like a, a rectangle, you can just use the rectangle. But for, let's say this door, we use the pen tool. And then I can just like draw, um, draw out some lines here and we can do something like this actually maybe we oh, that was not very good what did i do there there we go and then we can you know keep giving this some shape and just change the arc a bit here. And that's sort of the first um, stages of that door. And we move these over here. So there you go. So that could be the spline or the shape of the door. And then when I go into a 3D view, you will have this like so. And then we can drop that into a extrude NURB or object or whatever they're called. And that creates this 3D geometry. And if I expand it on the Z axis for this, you basically get that exact shape we had for the door. And you keep doing that for different, different shapes till you have, yeah, those that represents the holes you want to cut into your main form here. And then what you do is you add the model, which is the blob itself and the, all the cuts, which are these guys, um, into a bool object and a bool object can be found up here. And what that does is basically says, take a and use B to cut out holes in a, and, uh, normally it's set to a subtract B when you bring it out and that would make it look like this. But the problem here is it sort of looks like my car is a solid filled object. You know, it's very heavy, pure metal here, but we just want the frame. So instead of a subtract B, we can say a without B. And look at that. There we got some, that's a, that's a pretty good car um, frame shape, I think. And if we put this back to where it belongs on the, on the main car here, um, that sort of works. And then I think that's the most complex object we have. The rest is just smaller details that we add. Uh, so how are these, because they actually look more complex when you look at them like this, but how do we, how do we go about making them? So let's put this back and then let's look at this fancy breakdown animation here we got. So here we got all the components and something like the front of the car here, the grill, is that what you call it? I think so. Um, it looks pretty detailed here, but when you pull all the pieces apart, it's just cubes really. It's like a extruded or a long um, rectangle, right? That you put in different um, angles. So mainly all these objects are almost rectangles, except for these guys, which I'll, which are, which you can see uh, across the car on different places. Like here is something similar. And uh, maybe the ladder has some of that as well. This guy up here is kind of a, a, um, a spline of some kind that drives geometry. And how you make those is uh, if we create another, let's say we create a rectangle here, like a spline rectangle, and let's make it a little bit smaller. And then we can make a duplicate of it. Let's put that over there and make it really small. And then if I take a sweep nerve, which you can find up here and drop both of these guys into it, you get this. So the bottom one is the shape that uh, shows where this rec where this spline goes. And the other one is driving the thickness or the geometry. So um, I can actually 
make this rounded if I wanted to, or which is pretty much what these guys down here are. So if I, you know, that's pretty much that one there. And um, then you can set this size with this other guy. You can either use the scale tool or just in here. Um, and then what you can do if you want these to be a little bit more abstract, you can um, take the spline and then make it editable up there and then change these guys around. So let's say we want this to be a little bit more angled. Let's pull this back and maybe rotate it up um, or even rotate it more. So like that could be an interesting component to put somewhere. And then, you know, it's just versions of this that that drives all these elements. So it's mainly extrude objects that, that we use to cut out the holes or sweep nerves, which are the ones we just made. Or some of them are just pure cubes and cylinders and uh, tubes and things like for the wheel. But for these guys back here or for this plate here, it's just a cube that, you know, you just squash up and then, you know, that's pretty much the plane there. And if you want to make this guy, you can just make it into a cube again. Maybe add some filling or fillet to it. Something like this, scale it down. And you have something like this guy there. Um, so it's just a lot of different cubes and simple primitive objects. And you can find all these guys up here. So the very top here, that's a cube. And this is the oil tank thing, which you can find here. And also I'm, I haven't really like, it's not so much modeling going into it more than just combining all these elements together. And the wheels, for example, are also just tubes that I give some subdivisions, a little bit of rounded edges, and then we can, you know, copy it, scale it down and create slightly more complex um, shapes by just stacking objects together. And then you can give them different colors or whatever to separate them. So that's pretty much how this entire piece was done. The doors, for example, that I have in here are just the same cutout shape that we did earlier that I then reuse to create the door instead of having only the holes, but you want to put the door in there as well. So you just use the same um, extrude um, spline to, to create this door. Another neat thing is the symmetry object, which is up here as well. Uh, we have the bool and stuff and then the symmetry. And what that does is it, every object you drop in there will be mirrored on the opposite side of, you can set the mirror plane. And so at the moment I only have, I only made these sides or these objects on this side. And uh, when I turn it on, you can see that it just mirrors it. So I don't only have to create one version of it. And if you move these out, oops, if I move these out, you can see how they are mirrored on the opposite side. So when they are to come back on the car, you can see how they go in and out. So that's pretty much that. Hopefully this was somewhat informative and uh, kind of told you a little bit about how you could do a, an object like this or a model like this. Uh, let me know in the comments if, if you like this type of format and I might do more of these in terms of 3D modeling because I think it's a little bit easier than to show the full process and the, you know, it's a lot of less editing for me as well. Um, yeah, subscribe to the channel, uh, keep following along as I make the video or the film, and uh, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.